While my husband is practicing guitar in there, I'm going to show you how to self-draft a cover for just about anything. A toaster, your fish finder, a generator, whatever you want to cover. I'm going to be covering my plotter because right now it looks like this. And it will look like this at the end. So here's the plotter. We're going to start off by taking some basic measurements. Your basic width and then your, your height. But this is slanted, so I'm going to take the high point back here and get my measurement from the table. Up. So because the ends here aren't square, they're rounded up this way, and then of course you have this shape. What you're going to do is, and this will work for just about any three-dimensional thing. You're going to make, you know, flat fabric into a three-dimensional cover. So take a roll of, this is called craft paper. You can get it at Walmart or Menards or anywhere. It's just like paper bag material. You can actually use a paper bag if it will fit your item, like the, you know, yeah take it apart and make a sheet of paper out of it and if it'll cover the part of your thing that you're trying to pattern, you can use that. Always, it's nice to have a helper because nothing gets done without a helper. You're gonna take a pencil, Sharpie, whatever, and you're gonna put your piece of paper on the end here, line it up to the bottom, make sure it like will go down to your table or wherever you have this set on. You hold this in place. Try to keep it nice and steady, still. Keep it centered. And all you're going to do is you're going to take your pencil or whatever, and you're just going to kind of hold it flat on your whatever it is that you're tracing, and just kind of, you know, make a mark on on your uh, paper here. You go all the way around and get the proper shape that you want. And then I don't know if you will see it as really light, but you can see the mark I made on there. If you use a Sharpie or whatever, obviously it's going to be a lot darker and easier to see. But just kind of quickly draft it in like that. And then when you're done, you know, you can mark it darker and stuff. And you'll cut that shape out with just with scissors. So you take your, uh, you know, template thing that you made. It's all cut out. And I'm just going to do like a quarter inch seam allowance around it. I'm just going to eyeball it. It's no biggie. This is Taylor's chalk. Again, you can probably use, you know, like whatever you have available. Just trace around. Okay. Cut it out. This is, um, I use this uh, denier stuff for a lot of different projects, so this is just a scrap. Try to use up the scraps before you use up your good material. Just cut on your line. You take your first piece that you cut out and use it, you know, trace it to, to make your second piece. And in my case, the uh, this is going on two end pieces of you know of my plotter, so they have to be opposite. So like if I traced it you know, with the bad side up on both, then I'd have two identical pieces and one would be inside out on the plotter. So I've got to flip it over like that. Again, just simply cut it out. <coughs> So we have our two end pieces now. When you're deciding, you know, how much material you need to cover this, easiest thing to do if you have a soft, soft tape like this, is just measure from basically the, the table around. 
And this measures out to be about, I don't know, 25 and a half inches or so. So I'm going to cut my material about 27 inches just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room for uh, seam allowance and um, error, basically. It's better to have just a hair too much and have to cut it off than uh, not enough and have to scrap the whole thing. So I've got the big uh, piece of material here. And this is a selvage edge here. This is junk. You don't want to measure from, from here over. You want to measure from this point over because this you're going to cut this off. It's trash. Now we've got our piece cut out, and then our two end pieces. So you'll you'll see that these, this material, most material, all material, I guess, has a good side and a bad side. This is considered the bad side on this one. The front is like that nylon-y stuff. So you want to put your pieces right side together, line them up, throw a few pins in. And you'll do the same thing with the other piece, the other end piece. Okay. So that's pretty much what it should look like when you're getting ready to start sewing. Bring the whole thing over to your machine, and your machine is probably different than mine. This is a Sailrite, um, like industrial, whatever walking machine you're probably going to have a little bit different stuff going on here, but you want to sew this like when I did my measurements and everything, I cut out for about a quarter inch of seam allowance. So that's what I'm using, you know, between my needle and the edge of this foot here is roughly a quarter inch. It's close enough for me. Um, when you start sewing, make sure that you backstitch like a few stitches like to lock them in. When you get to these corners, it's tricky. You'll have to, you're going to take this piece of, the small piece of material here, the end cap thing, and you're going to pretty much bring it around so it maintains a, a straight line along here. And I'll show you how to do that. This machine is brand new, so it's not broken in yet and it wants to take off, so it's a little difficult for me just to go really slowly around. This is pretty, a pretty uh, tight corner. You can lift up your presser foot, make sure your needle is buried, and then you can turn your work a little easier. Also make sure you drop your press your foot down. And if you don't, you know, if you don't trust yourself with the pedal to, to round a corner like this, like I don't with this new machine, because I'm still getting used to it on delicate things or curved things, you can just turn the hand wheel and it will bring it through. Other sides sewn on. So this is what you'll be left with pretty much. I've decided to put an accent strip in my cover. It was pretty boring looking just as a black cover. So I'm going to jazz it up a little bit with some red or maroon. Um, it also works good if you accidentally measured a half inch too short. <laughs> so, here's a good way to uh, compensate for a little mistake. The, the cover fits the plotter, but it's just a little tighter than I want. So I'm just going to add a little strip in the center to make, make it a little more colorful, nice looking, a little more custom, and kind of make up for my little measurement error. 
So I'll just lay the cover out here and I'll measure from this point to this point. Find the center point. And then I'll slice this like that. Bring it apart and sew in this strip here. And that will give me the, um, the ease that I want around the plotter. The accent strip this is the, the good side of the material again this is the bad side so we want to take the, the good side and our accent strip here same thing it's got a good side and a bad side you want to put good sides together or right sides together and just line up the edge like that throw a couple pins in there Just for the heck of it, I'm going to put some color matched top stitching here. Just, I don't know, why not? Custom's custom, right? Okay. We'll do the other side exactly the same. So we're at the point now where I'm putting a little hem at the very bottom of the um, cover. So I just folded it up about maybe about half an inch or so. And then I'm putting about a quarter inch away from this edge, a top stitch on here. And with these Sailrite machines, one nice thing about them is the bobbin stitch and the top stitch are almost identical. Where on a regular machine, your top stitch is always a little bit nicer. These, they're pretty much the same, so you can actually um, sew it upside down so you can see what you're doing. Where on a home machine, you would need to, if you really wanted to look the best it can, you would need to flip it to the right side and, and stitch like that, which can make it tough to, you know, make sure you're getting your material in there. And when you stop to adjust like this, make sure your needle is buried in the material because uh, otherwise you can move off your path of stitching if you're trying to manipulate it and stuff in there. This will make sure that you stay right on track. After hitting this with the iron a little bit to get all the wrinkles out, um, if you iron this kind of material, be careful that it doesn't melt because the other side has got like a plasticky, like a waterproof coating on it. So you just have to kind of take it easy when you iron it. Let's see how we fit here. There we go. Just right. It's exactly what I needed. I wanted it loose like that so I could just, you know, drop it on and take it off. Without this strip, it was real snug on there. It, it fit, but it was really tight. So since obviously I don't have any wind in my studio here, I just needed a dust cover and I wanted it to be loose. So that's it. If you think about making a cover for something, hopefully you found that helpful. Thanks for watching.